We continue our conversations on a developing stories that we are chasing for you here on a daytime update. Uh, one of those, uh, the Commission for the Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Communities is investigating allegations of human rights abuse against the Wasti Zabandu mission. We did talk a little bit earlier on uh, to the professor from the CRL Rights Commission. Now for more on the story, I'm joined on the line by Mariki Burtma, who was a victim of Wasti Zabandu mission in, in KZN. Mariki, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning, uh, rather this afternoon, on, on Daytime Update. Very brave of you to come thank forward um, and to speak up about you yourself having lived there and having been a victim. Tell us your story. Hmm. Um, hi, Tammy, and thank you for having me on this uh, on, on your show. Yes, um, you know, it's been years and years of trying to um, talk about the reality and the truth about Kwasi Zabantu mission. Um, I, having moved to Kwasi Zabantu personally at the age of two in 1986 with my adopted family, and um, the abuse had already been at a very high peak by that time. Um, when we talk about abuse, abuse comes in many forms. It could be physical, mental, emotional. Um, I was one of the victims of the sexual abuse. I was one of the victims of the mental abuse. Pasis Abantu took me, didn't even give me the opportunity as a young girl, as a child, to be a child. I had to work on the farm. And not just that, they took me out of school halfway through grade seven, standard five. They never allowed me an education. I had to be a slave because I was one of the unwanted children that were not born on the premises. Now, Marika, you have spoken before about your childhood and your ordeal, you yourself being a, an actress in South Africa and, and a known um, individual. Now that News 24 has come up and they've revealed uh, seven months' worth of in investigations. Um, have you at all been contacted uh, by people from uh, Wasi Zabantu? Have you been in contact with them since you, you left the, the mission? And when did you leave? Well, um, I, was, I was one of the people that were actually chased away. Um, I was uh, uh, chased away as punishment for not following the rules and not repenting. So in '99. Um, they actually chased me away to one of their other farms because these people own almost 30 different farms in the country. And um, it was as part of my punishment where I had to carry on working as a slave at only the age of between 13 and uh, 16. And that is when I tried to commit suicide where they then disowned me totally. Um, I do still have a sister who lives on the premises. I last year tried to reach out to her and I was chased away at 7 p.m. and I was told that they don't have accommodation for me. I, uh, since this, um, the News 24 has been working with us for the past few months, interviewing us. And also, uh, since uh, the story went live on the 19th, I have received uh, threatening SMSs uh, from anonymous numbers and even phone calls that have told me to please withdraw, uh, I must know my sister is still there. Um, currently, as we speak, I do have my phone with me of someone who actually said to me directly, who the hell do you think you are? Mariki, have you tried to contact the police at any stage? Did you at any time try to reach out to authorities? And I ask this only because um, you know, some may be asking if perhaps you yourself or, or others who may have found yourself in that situation, if you tried to reach out for mm. help when those within the mission were not hearing your cries. Um, I'm going to be uh, uh, go back a few years. It's been quite a few years ago that many times the stories about um, the, the emotional, the mental, the physical, and the money laundering, ha people had tried to expose them. But every time the story would be shut down, as soon as it reaches media, somehow the trace of the story would disappear. 
A few years ago, I was even contacted by carte blanche on the incident, but the story went dead. So um, we basically, no one ever believed us because the front of Kwasi Zabantu um, is totally different to when you become a co-worker's child or you are one of the servant's uh, children. Then obviously um, the way we got treated, I mean, as a little girl of eight, being uh, uh, checked whether you are a virgin or not and having a, a lot of ladies uh, sticking their fingers in your private parts. Um, that is a human rights uh, 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 total. We've tried and we were always shut down. No one ever believed us. And But most of the people that actually got to run away physically from Kwasi Zabantu were helped by people they reached out to. Um, uh, via Radio Kwezi uh, to be able to say, look, this is what's really going on. I need to get away. My sister was one of them who was actually helped to run away from the premises. Marike, as far as the infiltration and the violations, are these happening at top management? Is it the leadership of the church or is it among the congregants or among the workers? How far up the hierarchy um, is this and, and does this go? Sami, um, I, uh, I'm going to be straightforward, seeing the stories out. I personally was beaten up by Ola Stegen himself. I personally, my clothes were ripped off by my own family in front of Ulo Stegen, and I got beaten up how many times? Not once, not twice, not three times. High management would punish me by putting pepper water in my mouth for talking too much. I was made to eat like soap as part of punishment to wash my mouth for, being, for speaking. The beatings were so bad by higher management. I remember being beaten up with bicycle chains, being pulled by my hair and my head bashed just against the wall, uh, not once, not twice. This happened till I was uh, chased away from the mission in 99. M Mariki, um, will you be participating in the hearings by the CRL Rights Commission and the investigations that they are doing? I would definitely be participating because I do have to make it very clear it has not been an easy journey. And as we speak, there are hundreds of other victims that I can mention by name, which I won't, that are scared because of family members that are still on the premises. So there are hundreds of people willing to come out, but anonymously. So if we have to be the voice and the face for those uh, that were before or that are currently scared for their own lives to come out publicly, I will be that face. Mariki, I thank you so much for um, talking to us today on Daytime Update. I thank you for your openness. I thank you for your honesty. I thank you for your bravery and I wish you continued strength and protection uh, as well as healing more than anything else and justice. And thank you very much as well to News24 for the incredible work that they continue to do in this space seven months of investigations unearthing the type of human rights violations that make us all shudder and what we all want ultimately is justice and freedom for all.